Welcome to another video series with Mr. Long and we're looking at a CAT or Computer Applications Technology Prac exam for grade 11 for November 2020 and this paper has been provided by Study Opportunities, the textbook company and we just thank you for giving us the opportunity to go through this paper, to thank you to Study Opportunities. So let's get stuck into this question paper. Let's start with question one which is the word question. So here we've got a theme about bridging the gap, it's about digital divide and we're starting with the word processing question I've already opened up the one bulletin document, I've got it over here and let's start with 1.1 they want us to change the character spacing of e-learning lessons on the cover page to a normal setting now that's to do with the font if you don't know so we're going to select this text over here and we're going to come here to the font now you can either click on the dialog pop-up or you can right click and go to font those are both feasible and now if you look here you don't see anything about character spacing but that's because you must go to the advanced tab and there you can see it's expanded the spacing we want to set that to normal you'll notice that the keywords normal character spacing are exactly like they are in the question and that's how you know you're on the right track if you see similar words to how they are in the question so let's go into 1.2 insert a table of contents in the space provided on page one and they basically talking here about there mustn't be a border and the entries must look like this and there are only two levels and it's only three marks so I've got a feeling that entering the table of contents is one the only two levels is two and then maybe the way it looks would be the third mark so let's go have a look we're going to scroll down and over here we've got the table of contents there it is so we're going to come here to referencing and we're going to come here to table of contents so there we go i'm just set to minimize it a bit because it wouldn't allow me to see the options over here so we're going to come over here to table of contents and we're going to come here to custom table of contents and if you remember correctly they said they wanted to look like this if you look at the document they don't want the numbers right on the edge and with the leader they want it right next to the values so if I come here, I'm going to say I don't want it right aligned and I want them right next to each other. So there we go. We can use that. And how many levels? We want only two levels. So we only want two levels. So let's see what happens when we press OK. And so there's our table of contents. And if I move it across, you can see, yes, it's very similar to what they've got. I think that's exactly what they want. So that's how I want to do my table of contents. Let's move to 1.3. Locate the table of figures on page one, which I think is just slightly below it. There we go. Perform the necessary so that when the table of figures is updated, the first entry in the table will be figure one internet and page two. So at the moment, there is no internet. So we want to basically edit figure one's caption. So we're going to come down to where figure one. And so here's figure one over here. And I'm going to double click on the caption. And I'm going to change that to internet. So there we go. And then I'm going to scroll back up to my table of figures. I'm going to right click on the table of figures. And then I'm going to update the field. And I want to update the entire table. And so if you look over there, you'll notice that figure one now says internet, which means it's been updated. Okay, 1.4, locate the text abbreviation RCT under the heading introduction and ensure that this text will not be included in the automatic index if such an index is created. They give us a little tip about using the show hard. So let's go find RCT. So if I go down to the first paragraph, there we go. We see RCT and you can see that there is an index over there and we want to remove this particular index. So I'm going to click on it and delete it so that it's not there anymore and if they talk about the show how they're talking about that and if you click on it you'll notice there's no reference to an index there as well so 1.5 locate the text er under the heading some silver linings and add a footnote like this so we want to say the word emergency rescue but it must be a capital a that is the index so let's go find it we'll scroll down there is er let's double click on it and we're going to go to references and insert a footnote. Now, the key thing about this footnote, if I click on footnote, it's just going to add a one, which is not actually what I want to do. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to come here to footnotes over here. We want to insert a footnote at the bottom of the page and we want the number format to be the capital letter A, B, C. So starting with A and we're going to say insert one. So there inserts the A. I'm going to type in emergency rescue and then click away. And if I move my mouse over ER, you'll see that it says emergency rescue. So there we go. We know it's working. 1.6, locate the paragraph shaded in green under the heading adoption and adaption, which I found it over here. If I go, there it is. There's the paragraph in green. And we need to make it look like this. So they take note that the thickness of the lines in this border is four and a half. And we mustn't use space bars to position any text. Okay, so let's go have a look at what it looks like. So the first thing I notice is I'm going to select all of this text. And I'm first going to do the border because that's the easiest for me. So I'm going to come there, select the borders borders and shading and we 
we do not, if you see there, we do not want a top or a bottom border, but we want four and a half points on the side. So I'm going to remove the top and the bottom, and then I'm going to select four and a half points and deselect and reselect the left and deselect and reselect the right border. So that looks like that. You'll also notice that the text is aligned on the left hand side, but it's also aligned on the right hand side, which means it's actually justified. So I'm going to click on the justified option to make it look like that. And then there's this, these dotted lines over there. They don't have them in our one. There's two ways that they could be did. They see there's a tab there. So we could either remove the tab or we could just remove the actual use of the tab field. If you use show hide, you'll see that there's a tab there. So we're actually going to just delete that tab to remove it. As I said, another way is to remove the actual tab stop if you want to do that. And then I think the last thing is, do you notice there's a bit of an indent over here? So let's go do that. So we're going to do an indentation. Let's select it. And that's a paragraph setting. So we can click on paragraph and it's just the first line. So an indentation, we want a first line indent and they don't mention any values, but let's make it somewhere. Let's make it two centimeters or 2.5. Just I don't want the spacing like that, so I'm just take all that away. I'll just leave it like it was. Click OK, and there we go. I think that looks exactly like we want it. There we go. So I think that's exactly what we want. There we go. Let's move on to the next one. Locate the text citation under the heading MOOCs. So let's go down. There's MOCs. There's the word citation. And replace the text with a citation for the source computers part of your life, grade 12. And it must appear like that. So Jacobs 2008 and page 59. So let's go to that citation. And we're going to replace it. So I'm selecting that text. And we're going to use one of our sources over here. So we've already assumed that they've added the sources. If I click on manage sources, you'll see that they've added sources to this document. So we don't need to worry about adding them, but we're going to insert a citation. And which one we want this one, the computer's part of your life, grade 12. So I'm going to click on that. Now you'll notice that it says ZZZ, which I think is something wrong with the actual citation. So I want to go manage the source and click on the computer's part of our life. We're going to edit it. And you'll notice that the year is incorrect. If we look over here, the year is 2018 so let's go change that to 2018 and click ok close and you'll see that it would update automatically and then you also would have noticed that they added a page number now we don't want to add a page number to our main source because there could be a reference to it and you could use different page numbers at different citations so i'm going to click on here and see if we can edit the citation for just this one and we want to include page numbers i'm going to say page 59 and click ok and there it adds the page number for this particular citation so I think that's enough. I think that's exactly what they want for 1.7. So 1.8, change the styles in the document as follows. Change the paragraph after space of the heading two style. So let's go to the document. We're going to go to home and there's the heading two style. I'm going to right click on it and modify it. And as I said, they want to change the after space of the heading style to six point. That's a paragraph setting the after to six points. So I'm going to come here to format and go to paragraph. And we want the after, if you remember correctly, to be six points. Take that down to six points and click OK. OK. And then this next one is change all instances of heading three style to be a subtitle style. So we're going to change heading three to a subtitle style. So we're going to go to heading three. So that's heading three. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select all data and you can see these two have been selected and I'm going to change them to the subtitle style. So by clicking on them, those two have now changed from heading three to a subtitle style. Let's do 1.9. Locate the text survey under the heading internet connectivity. Let's scroll down. Internet, there's the word survey. Make it possible for the user to, to press control click on this text to jump to the heading appendix. And that means we want to create some sort of hyperlink to the appendix survey results. So I'm going to select the text, which we've done already. We're going to insert a hyperlink. Come across here to link. We're going to come down here to insert link. And we're going to go to maybe a place in this document and go down to the appendix. And there's appendix survey results. And that's the link that they want me to go to. So I'm going to click OK. And so now when I move my mouse over, it's going to go to the current document, but to a different place. So now when I want to go to that link, I can press Control and click on the link and it jumps to the survey results. So that's how you know that it's working. With hyperlinks, as I said, you press Control and then you click on the link and it'll jump to that particular point. So that's how I know that Control plus click is a hyperlink.
So let's do 1.10. Locate the paragraph with the image under the heading compatibility issues. I'll scroll down there, it seems to be. And make the necessary changes so that the text in the paragraph flows around the image as follows. So it flows around. If we look at the moment, you can see the image is in front of the text. So I'm going to click here on picture format. I'm going to come here to wrap text and we want it to be through would be a good option or even tight would, would also work. Either one of those should be fine so that the text goes around the image. There we go for one mark. 1.11 locate the text in blue under the heading the road ahead. Scrolling down there's the road ahead. We're looking at the text in blue which I think is that text over there and use a word column feature and a symbol represented by Wendings character code 56 to format this text as follows. So we want like some sort of mouse bullets and then we want to put the bullets into three columns with a line in between. So let's go. I'm going to first put it in bullets. So let's go select bullets and we want mouse. I don't have a mouse option at the moment. So let's go define a new bullet and we want a particular symbol. And I think they've helped me by saying that it's a Wingdings character 56. So if I come here, we want to go to Wingdings. There's Wendings, and we want to get to 56. If we just scroll through here, you'll see there's a mouse over there, and you can see that it's character number 56. So we're going to have that as my new bullet. And you can see all of my values are in a bullet. And then we're going to go to Layout and put those bullets into three columns. So I'm going to say three columns so that it looks like that. But you'll also notice that these three columns have a line in between. So I'm going to come here to Columns and just go to More Columns and just make sure that we've got a line in between the text. And we can always make other changes here if we need to. But I think that is exactly what we need to do for that one. Then 1.12, locate the smart art under the heading the road ahead and changes so that it appears as follows. So there we can see we've got give wings and we want to put a them in between the give and the wings. So I'm going to right click on the smart art and we're going to add a shape after the give and then we're going to right click and we're going to edit the text and we want to say them and type in them and we've now got give them wings click away there we go there's our smart art 1.13 locate the text box shaded in yellow under the heading the road ahead insert the file name of the current document as a field together with the path of the document so in this box over here we're going to include a field, insert a particular field. Now, if you can come here to quick parts, you can see that there's a field. So I'm going to look for a file name. I'm going down there. There's file name. And they said they must include the path. The path is all the folder name. So we're going to include the path. We can always change more details there if you want, but we want to add the path to the file name. Click OK. And there you can see the path of the document. And then the file name appears at the end and it's all in gray, which means it's a field, which means as we change it, it'll update to that field. Let's move on to 1.14. Locate the text in red under the heading important issues. Scroll down to important issues. There we can see the text. Format the text as a multi-level list that appears as follows. Without the border, do not change any colors. Okay, so let's have a look at this. If you look over here, that is our level one. That's our first level of text. And you'll see it's the number with a dot. And you can see our one is letters with the square bracket. So that's incorrect. And then we want 1.1, 1.2. Where does it get that one from? That's from level one. And then this one and two is from its own level. So that three is from level one. And then the one and the two is from this level, level two. And then level three is just the letters followed by a dot. So we're going to select all the text and we're going to come here to home and go to a multi-level list. Let's define a new multi-level list and we're going to scrap the level one. We want level one to just be whatever this level is, which is going to be a one, two or three followed by a dot. Then we're going to go to level two and we want that to be a 1.1 which is exactly what we want it to be because the one is going to come from this level. The one's going to come from the previous level and the one's going to come from the next level. And then level three will be an A with a dot, which is exactly what we want it to be. We want a letter followed by a dot. So I think that's going to be okay. So let's click okay. So we've got the same as that. Let's compare it next to each other. So everything seems to be in line, but you'll notice that charts is actually 3.2. So I'm going to click here on charts and press tab so that it looks exactly like this. Okay, so that's quite easy. 
Let's move on to 1.15, insert automatic index under the heading index. The index must be formatted as follows. So let's, there is the index part. We're going to come here to references. We're going to insert an index. And what are our options? They want me to have some sort of leader with the numbers at the end. And you'll see that it is all together in one column. So I'm going to say, yeah, we don't, we only want one column and we want, we want to include the page numbers. And we want the dotted leader that looks like that. And we want the pages to be right aligned. So it looks like it's on the side. So let's click OK. And let's compare what it looks like compared to what we want. It looks like, it looks like it's spot on exactly how we want it to be. OK, so the numbers might be slightly out of sync depending on how we've changed things before. But at least it looks the same. 1.16. Change the referencing style of the bibliography to Harvard and Lear. I don't know if I pronounced that correct. Referencing style. So let's come over here to the bibliography. I'm going to select the bibliography and then I'm going to change it to Harvard and Lear like that. And you'll see that it's changed it automatically to be that style. So that's all you need to do. So you just change it over there and that's how it worked. Quite easy. Now 1.17. Locate the appendix which is contained on the last two pages of the document. So here we go. Here's the appendix. And do the following. Edit the table as follows. Ensure that if the table spans more than one page, as is presently in the case, the top row will appear on every page. So that must appear on every page. So it's there, but if I go to the next page, you see it's not there at the moment. So if we come up here to the top and we click on this table, we've got these table options at the top here. And I'm going to come here to layout and I want to repeat the header row. Now when I click on that, you'll notice when I come down that it repeats it over there. But just remember, you can only do that if that row, by the way, is set as the header row. So make sure that that top row is a header row. And then you can come here to layout and repeat the header row on each page. So just make sure that those two settings are set. Add the appropriate formula in the bottom right cell. So if I come all the way to the bottom, they want the average data used per month. So they want the average of all this data. So we're going to insert a formula, which we are on layout. And there's the formula. And we want the, not the sum of the above, but we want the what other option do we have? We can get the average of the above. So I'm going to take away all these other ones. Actually, it's going to be equal to average. And we want to average the above. And click OK. And there we can see. If you click on it, you see it goes gray. That's how we know that it's a formula. OK, so it's 1.17.2. Insert the image one pencil only on the header of the appendix. This image must not appear on any other page. So when I come over here to the header of the appendix over here, I'm going to double click on the header. And you can see that this section is different to that section. So if I do something here, and if I come over here, you'll see that it's still over there, which is not what I want. When I do something over here, I want to make sure that it doesn't do it at the other one. So I'm going to unlink it. It mustn't be linked to the previous. I want this to be separate. So if I type something over here and I scroll up, you'll see that nothing appears in this one because it's been unlinked. So this is how I know that I can insert an image into this part of the appendix that appears only in the header of the appendix. So therefore we can insert a picture over here. Let's go insert picture on this device. And there is the picture file, pencil PNG. And so here we can see that the picture is there. If I scroll up, you see there's no pencil in that one, but it's only in the appendix. That's why you unlink it first and then you can put in the image in here. Click away just to get away. Then change the automatic page numbers in the footer of the two pages of the appendix to A and B without quote marks. Do not change the page numbers of the other pages. So this must be in the footer. So we're going to come down here to the footer. Double click over here. And we want to change these to just an A or a B. So we want to change it. But I'm going to unlink it from the previous as well. So that it's not connected to that 7. And we're going to insert a page number. The format. Let's format the ones that we've got. And we want it to be an A, B, C. And we want it to start at A. So let's click OK. And so if I click away, you'll see that there's an A there. And there's a B there. But because we unlinked it. If I scroll up, you'll see that that 7 and that 6 has not been affected. So that's how we do the page numbering of 1.17.3. And then the last question is 1.18. Replace all instances of the word pupils with the word learners in uppercase. So we're going to come here to find. Let's go right to the top. It's easiest if we start from the very beginning. And we're going to go here to find and replace. We're going to replace the word pupils with the text learners. I'm going to type in learners like this. And let's go replace all. And it says it's done 15 replacements. So we click OK. And then that should be fine. So if I close, then hopefully all the pupils are now being changed to learners. If you want to double check, you can always come here to find. 
and type in the word pupils and you'll see there's no matches but if I type in the word learners you'll see all these capital letters that are in the document now so there we go I think that is the whole of question one 45 marks we're now going to do question two which is the spreadsheet question just remember that if you look in the video description you'll find links to the other questions as well as to the data files click on the subscribe button leave a like leave a comment we'd love to hear from you and share us with your friends and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way